excuse me, little dog. All right, guys, it is a gray, gloomy, windy, soon to be rainy Monday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on the final day of February. Two months down, it is Monday morning, February 28th, 2022. So, uh, not hard to find any doomer porn uh, on the Monday morning. Uh, mainstream media, I cannot believe it that one story managed to break into uh, the, uh, the Putin panic uh, that has now taken over the corona panic. I am glad to see that Vladimir Putin has managed to kick corona panic to the curb as Putin panic has now taken over the planet. So thank you, Vlad, for that. But unbelievably, we have the latest stark warning, the latest stark warning, dire reports. We have stark, we have dire, we have damning uh, IPCC report making the third biggest story on the planet and uh, I'm just going to touch base on a few of them, and I am absolutely embarrassed for Time Magazine coughing up this uh, trite, hackneyed, I love that word, hackneyed cliche about the rapidly closing window. And Time Magazine picked that term out of the latest stark, dire, damning UN uh, IPCC report about this rapidly closing window to uh, save the planet. Uh, I'm pretty sure the first mention, I, I, I think if you go back to 1948 and check out our plundered planet, 1948, who was that, Osborne somebody? Now, it was more on habitat destruction than climate change back in 1948. I think he was talking about the rapidly closing window of opportunity to save the planet when the population of the planet was less than 3 billion. Um, I would be shocked if you did not hear that, uh, when was it, 1988 or 1989, somewhere in the late 1980s, where uh, the UN and all of these climatologists were talking about our rapidly closing window of opportunity uh, to save the planet. Uh, I, 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 I honestly don't know when they're going to dispense with this bullshit and admit that the window to save this planet, whether from habitat destruction, the sixth mass extinction, climate change, and all the rest, uh, was probably around 1970, with, was when it, uh, the by, certainly by now, the window has been shut for decades and screwed to the windowsill with uh, storm windows, hurricane-proof storm windows like the one here uh, in this house uh, over the top of them. Uh, it is time to cut the crap. But anyway, since I am still, uh, obviously, uh, when we get such delicious doomer porn, let's just read the first couple of paragraphs and we will end up, we will start with the rapidly closing window and we will end with the damning indictment. Good old Time Magazine. The window to adapt to climate change is rapidly closing, warns the IPCC. Yes, after decades of failure to stop emissions rising, a landmark, don't forget landmark, a landmark new report released this morning from the United Nations Climate Science Body warns that the impacts of climate change 
are here and now humans need to accelerate efforts to adapt. States the report summary, quote, it is unequivocal that climate change has already disrupt, disrupted human and natural systems. Okay, the next decade, yes, the next decade, uh-huh, I mean, since the last decade uh, was not enough of a crucial test, the next decade will prove a crucial test of whether the world can move fast enough to implement plans to adapt to this increasingly complex challenge. Quote, any further delay, I guess any further delay after the end of the next decade, is that what they're talking about? Any further delay in concerted anticipatory global action on adaptation and mitigation will miss a brief now uh, at least 44 year miss a brief and rapidly closing window of opportunity to secure a livable and sustainable future for all. As the report says, uh, this report is the second of three plan reports, uh, the first of which was released back in August and made clear the world was on track to surpass one and a half degree of warming, a threshold widely considered likely to trigger catastrophic and irreversible effects. Yes. Uh, at the root of that urgency are the clear damages already harming not just human society, but also natural ecosystems, coral reefs and forested areas, including in the Amazon rainforest, are among the ecosystems that face the threat of catastrophic climate tipping points, after which the impacts are irreversible without a clear pathway to restoration. This in turn shapes human civilization, both because locals depend on these ecosystems for everything from food to clean air, and because they hold carbon that would otherwise enter the atmosphere and worsen global warming. There you go. All right, then here's an article looking directly at the Sunshine State of Florida, where climate change has irreversibly changed Florida, a new global report says. Unchecked climate change has already changed Florida permanently and irreversibly, and the world has a limited window. We've gone from rapidly closing to a limited window. What the, f what the hell does a limited window mean? The world has a limited window to stop it from getting worse. According to a new global report from the world's top scientist, yes, the scientific evidence is unequivocal. Climate change is a threat to human well-being and the health of the planet. Any further delay and concerted global action will miss that good old brief and rapidly closing window to secure a livable future. Okay, we're going from a rapidly closing window, we are going from a limited window to a stark 
picture, a stark picture here in the ma mainstream media this morning. New UN report paints a stark picture of impacts of climate change. Yes, a new UN science report sends what may be the starkest warning yet about the impacts of climate change on people and the planet. Yes. All right, but we're just going to end up what was actually the third biggest story on the planet directly from Yahoo News climate correspondent Ben Adler. We have now have a damning indictment. So I'm going to put the link on to the third biggest story in the planet between uh, between all of these uh, Putin panic stories. A damning indictment as UN releases dire new climate change report. All right, we have damning and dire in one headline. The third biggest headline on the planet, both damning and dire. Don't know where the third D doom is. I'm going to put the link on here and you can read this yourself, but uh, I'll just sit here and read it for you if you would like. Okay, take it away, Yahoo News. The latest report from the IPCC released this morning finds that millions of people and animals have already suffered from the impacts of climate change and that the number will reach into the billions by mid-century unless, unless the world rapidly reduces greenhouse gas emissions and keeps global temperatures from rising above one and a half degrees C over pre-industrial levels. Yep, yep, yep. This is UN Nations Secret United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Quote, I have seen many scientific reports in my time, but nothing like this. Today's IPCC report is an atlas of human suffering and a damning indictment of failed climate leadership, says the UN Secretary General himself talking about a damning indictment of the failed climate leadership. There you go. With fact upon fact, this report reveals how people and the planet are getting clobbered by climate change. Yes, quoting, uh, quoting the report, quoting the dire, damning indictment, quote, human-induced climate change, including more frequent and intense extreme events, has caused widespread adverse impacts and related losses and damages to nature and people beyond natural climate variability. Widespread pervasive impacts to ecosystems, people, settlements, and infrastructure have resulted from observed increases in the frequency and intensity of climate and weather extremes, including hot extremes on land and in the ocean, heavy precipita precipitation events, can you say Australia today, drought and fire weather. Fire weather uh, is a new term for the uh, collapse. Uh, all right. And of course, for those of you not uh, realizing this, the new report finds that many of these effects are at the worst end of past projections, where once again, 
uh, as history bears out over and over, now that we have these uh, worst case scenarios going back, you know, to at least the late 1980s, over and over and over again, these new reports bear out the fact that the worst case scenarios of these earlier reports uh, are the closest to the truth, although my guess is, as any of these IPCC guys knows, it is worse than the worst case scenario. It is worse than you could previously have imagined. I would love to hear, I can imagine Book Hermit uh, reading this report now. All right. The report finds that many of these effects are at the worst end of past projections. This is Camille Car Parmesan, a lead author of the report from the U UT Austin. There you go, from Austin, Texas. Uh, quote, one of the most striking conclusions in our report is that we are seeing adverse impacts being much more widespread and being much more negative than expected in prior reports or than expected at the current 1.09 degrees Celsius of warming that we have. Some of these things we're seeing that were not expected at 1.09 degrees C include diseases emerging in new areas, <clears throat> the first extinctions of species due to climate change, mass mortality events in trees and mammals, close quote. Uh, this is Christy E. by a co-author of the report from the University of Washington, quote, there are estimates of billions of people at risk for dengue fever later in this century and the mosquito as the mosquito that carries it increases. Yeah, she added that if climate change continues at its current pace, there are, quote, hundreds of millions of people at risk, close quote, of malnutrition due to reduced crop, re crop yields. Uh, as a result, it is now a certainty that life for millions of people has been or will soon be changed dramatically. The only question now is how. This is Ed Carr, uh, a report co-author Ed Carr from Clark University in Massachusetts, quote, the takeaway message, you know, of this new uh, dire report, the takeaway message is that we have waited too long to act. At this point, incremental actions are not, are not going to get us to a climate resilient future. We're talking about transformational changes to the way we live. We are not talking about transforming or not transforming. The choice now is between the changes we choose and transformations that are forced upon us by a changing environment. We do not get to just say, we're not going to do it. <clears throat> it is coming upon us one way or another, close quote. I need to have a sip from my uh, plastic bottle of water. For example, Carr said, coastal communities are getting flooded. Can you say uh, Florida and Australia? And they are likely 
if we don't take climate action to be completely inundated. In that situation, many coastal areas will become uninhabitable and force mass migration. Yes. Alternatively, the report states humans can reduce greenhouse gas emissions in an effort to keep sea levels from rising beyond a manageable amount, but that will also require other kinds of transformational changes, Carr noted, such as switching to renewable energy sources. Yes. Uh, anyway, you know, guys, uh, we have... How many times do we need to hear this? Uh, how many people on this planet do you think are paying any attention? Carr's thoughts were echoed in a statement by President Biden's climate envoy, John Kerry. Quote, the question at this point is not whether we can all, to, all together avoid the crisis. It is whether we can avoid the worst consequences. Denial and delay are not strategies. They are a recipe for disaster. Close quote. Overarchingly, not only are the effects worse than the average of previous estimates, there are two other major developments in the IPC's current assessment cycle, according to the authors. All right. One is that scientists are increasingly certain that specific extreme weather events and other devastating effects such as mass tree deaths caused by invasive insect species are caused by climate change and are not within the bounds of natural variability. And the other is that many of these effects are weakening the Earth's ability to absorb greenhouse gas emissions and are therefore potentially launching feedback loops that will make a return to normal conditions impossible if the world overshoots its goal of limiting warming to one and a half C. This, uh, quoting the report, quote, increasingly these observed impacts have been attributed to human induced climate change, particularly through increased frequency and severity of extreme events. These include increased heat-related human mortality, warm water coral bleaching and mortality, and increased drought-related tree mortality. Close quote. Anyway, guys, uh, this goes on and on, and then they're talking more about how we're supposedly at only 1.09 already seeing effects they didn't think would happen at one and a half five, and there is a great likelihood that the world will warm more than one and a half degree. Yeah, I would call 100% a great likelihood. Yes. Anyway, uh, you can read this. Uh, good Lord. Uh, now there, uh, this is, we're gonna wind up with Adele Thomas a co-author of the report who serves as a researcher at Climate Analytics. Okay, Adele, wind up the Doomer porn for this Monday morning. Exceeding one and a half C, which 
there is a 100% chance of us doing, means we will experience severe levels of loss and damage, some of which will be irreversible. That is particularly relevant for low-income, indigenous, and marginalized communities around the world, including my home country of the Bahamas. Coastal and low-lying areas are at risk of becoming uninhabitable, but how many depends a lot on how much warming occurs. Do you think so? Therefore, Thomas concluded, we need to simultaneously reduce greenhouse gas emissions, adapt to the risk of climate change, and also address losses and damages already being experienced. And we have a very limited amount of time left to do this. Yes. And the third and final report, which will be released in about one month, will look at how mankind can mitigate climate change. That ought to be a short report, and I guarantee you that overpopulation and reducing the birth rate will be nowhere in the third dire report about how we're going to turn this freight train around. There will not be one mention of, uh, of the only possible way to, uh, and, and even that is getting to be a joke. At, at this point. You will not see any mention of overpopulation uh, or reducing the birth rate to approach this from the demand side. Every solution is going to be some unadulterated greenwashing horse shit. The usual hopium soaked apocaloptimism just that will give the clueless morons uh, license to go right on about their business of doing what we do, and that is eating a planet. And with that, I have to wrap up this dire report of Doomer Porn this Monday morning because uh, I've got to go do my laundry. And uh, I have a big electric washing machine sucking the water out of the Florida aquifer and since it's uh, a gray rainy day as long as I'm down there of course I am going to use the electric dryer right next to the uh, water sucking giant washing machine and I'm sure I will go next door uh, to eat some farm-raised pig or chicken while I'm waiting for my clothes to wash and dry. Anyway, get out there and uh, wash your dirty laundry while you still can. Bye, guys.